this video for your effective virtual teams, where I'll be talking a little bit about good teaming process and also a little bit about some of the tools you might be able to do for your weekly video chats, uh, as well as your discussion assignment on building your communications chart, which I'll get into. So I have 15 tips for effective virtual teams. Uh, before I get into that, just a little bit about my background. Uh, as I've said before, I'm a virtual a serial entrepreneur. I've done three startup companies. Uh, the one that's most relevant here is my second company, where we were a virtualized company. We did our development of our product. We had five engineers in five cities, uh, plus salespeople uh, in, in Florida, uh, and the CEO and business side. So we had to become very good, and this was back in 2000. The tools were nowhere near as good as they are now. And I'll talk a little bit about some tools today. Um, Virtual teams are a skill that requires a little bit of effort to put into it. I know all of you are taking this online course. Uh, many of you are taking this for its convenience, but convenience is not a reason to not be good at effective teaming. Uh, and uh, we're actually running this pilot trial of entrepreneurship online for the BI because we want to figure out how to do these. Uh, we ran one last semester. We're trying to improve the process. So first attempt for vir virtual teams. The first one seems a little bit non uh, inconsistent, but ideally you really want to get the team together, ideally physically, early on. Um, but at a minimum, you need to have a video chat. And part of this is about building connections to people, not just focusing on a narrow, short task. So this isn't about the product or the assignment. You actually want to get to know the people, what motivates them, how they do things. Uh, view this as a social interaction, not just a business interaction. Um, and doing that physically, you can actually build bonds and then make it easier to communicate. Uh, you'll be surprised how often understanding people from different cultures, different backgrounds, different majors, different fields, uh, they use the same words slightly differently than you, and sometimes getting to know them can help you understand where they're coming from and how they're doing things, uh, help you understand if somebody's sarcastic or not. It's A lot of that gets lost, especially with textual communication. You can do a little better with video. The second and a very important thing, and something you're going to do for this assignment, is you're going to commit to a communications charter, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But um, the communications charter is, in fact, something I recommend solving at that first get-together because it's after that it'll be virtual communication. So you want to get all that worked out and nailed down. Um, you want to util utilize the best communications technology, uh, for example, video chats, shared screens, uh, and there's going to be tools. I'll show you a little bit. Some of these with Skype, Google Hangouts, Easy Talks, and Slack, all of which are free. You can use any of those for most of what we're going to do. For some of the things in this class, we'll probably be using Easy Talks because it's the only one that scales up to 30 or 40 students. We might actually try and have some shared sessions where when students are giving their midterm and final pitches, um, we'll use Easy Talks because then all 40 students can watch them if you want. Uh, so I'll show you Easy Talks today. It's also pretty easy to record stuff. The disadvantage of each of these has a little bit of disadvantages. Many companies use a commercial product called WebEx. Uh, it's not free. Uh, it's a little bit more robust than some of these other tools. It scales, but since it's it's not free, we're not going to do that. Uh, there's another one, Zoom, that, which I also use uh, for, for uh, non-free access, which we use for a bunch of business things we do as well. Um, one of your goals, uh, after you have your communication charters, your team continues working for, make sure in each of your meetings you clarify tasks and process processes, not just goals and roles. So it's not enough to say, Bob's going to do marketing analysis, whatever, come up with some tasks. What are the deliverables? How's that going to happen? Um, talk about what are the processes. In fact, a lot of what we do in this entrepreneurship class is as much about the processes and the learning you're going to get from those processes as the final outcomes. Um, if you do all the process right and the answer is not positive, that's still a proper business process and things are good. Um, I strongly recommend you build a, a team build a team with rhythm. As your team gets together, you come up with a way of communicating effectively. When you first start doing video chats, it's a little bit easier because you can sort of raise your hand or make a gesture so that other people can see you want to talk on a straight-up telecon. Uh, once your team becomes good at, at uh, rhythm, you can actually know when it's okay to talk, otherwise you bump into each other all the time in, you know, like the Geico commercial where they're all talking. Um, so developing that rhythm, also it's good to have a rhythm for regular communications. You're going to talk on Tuesday, uh, you're going to talk on Thursday, on Saturday, you come up with some process so that there's a regular communication. Um, it's also really important though not to let that rhythm interfere with active communication. So if a team member has a question or whatever, you could wait until the next call, but if that's a day away, send an email or a Slack message or a Skype message and chat one-on-one -on -one, um, or ask questions of the group um, so that when people come to the meeting, they can actually all be properly prepared, not just trying to deal with stuff in real time. It's important that rhythm continues on. 
So you're going to agree on your shared tools, not just communication tools, but also document tools and whatever. Uh, and if you're dealing with an international project, like one of the ones I have right now, right, making sure you understand the, the, the official language of, of the team, if team members speak multiple languages, which for me is general English, because I'm not good enough in any other foreign language to, to communicate regularly. I can get by, but wouldn't do a business process that way. Um, create a virtual gathering place and process. So we're going to actually try and get you to have some of this because when you're doing your video chats, I recommend you also have a little bit of time where before you begin the recording or the, the official meeting, you talk a little bit about how your week went, what went on, right? Not a lot, but connect to each other and understand what's going on. Um, we have a lot of things to do in this class and every business will have lots of schedules and pressures. So related to that virtual gathering place is where you can understand what are motivating people and how those things work together as you work towards a common process. Okay. Make sure you clarify and track commitments. So if somebody says, so if Terry is going to deliver this by Wednesday afternoon, make sure that you know, you're, gonna, you're gonna actually make that commitment. If I'm not gonna meet one of the commitments I've made, it's important I communicate as soon as possible, as soon as I know something's gonna go wrong to the rest of the team. You don't wanna have Wednesday show up because other people might be counting on that for their next step. You don't wanna wait until that happens and then so. So if I know on Monday I'm behind, I'm, it doesn't look like I'm gonna get it done, Communicate with the rest of the team then. This comes back to the, the shared communication. Um, I recommend you share, you foster shared leadership. It's not one person who is in charge. Uh, so try and have a process by which other people can demonstrate their leadership and step up and lead sub parts of the project. Uh, and even though this is about teaming, don't forget about the one-on-ones or the one-to-one -one communications. If two team members need to communicate without everyone else, it can often be more efficient for them to have a quick video chat or a quick communication separately. Um, with respect to the communication parts, make sure you speak up. Some of you may be a little more introverted than others, a little bit more shy, and think, oh, I'm not going to have as much to contribute to this conversation, so don't take that attitude. Um, in fact, studies have shown that very often the introverts often have really good insights and ideas, they just don't communicate them as aggressively, uh, and therefore often get overlooked. An important part of the innovation process in entrepreneurship is you need to speak up. If you're afraid to state your opinion, ask a question which will lead towards that direction. If you think there's something wrong going on, don't just be quiet about it. At the same time, it's very important that you listen. Really listen to what other people are saying. Um, I actually recommend, despite the fact that you're doing this virtual communication, but especially if you're doing it as a virtual phone call, as a phone call or a virtual video meeting, that somebody be taking notes. And we'll talk, that actually shows up in what you really want in a good communications charter. Somebody should be taking the minutes of every meeting. And it should generally rotate. It doesn't have to be the same person. but. Make sure you're listening to what people are saying um, and give them a chance to, to, to speak their mind and then ask follow-up questions. If you're not sure about something when they say it, speak up, ask questions, and then listen again to, to really make sure you understand the, the answers. Make sure that you're actively trying to integrate different facts and points of view. Your point of view is important, but so is every other person's point of view. In an entrepreneurial venture, most of them fail because they, f they don't actually understand what their customers want and how they can deliver it. So the more points of view you can get, the more likely you are to make sure you're covering a, an effective market segment. As you're developing on your ideas for your startup, um, make sure you experiment iteratively and in intently. Um, and by intently here, I just don't mean with lots of effort. I mean with in purpose and intent. Know why you're running this experiment. What's the goal? How are you going to measure the outcomes? And then use the results to move forward. It probably does also have a second double entendre meeting of with a lot of effort because this is a fast moving and an effective pro process. Only if you put a lot into your experiments will you actually get a lot out of them. And then finally, it's a good idea as a virtual team to reflect on your ideas and actions. Uh, when I was running my second company, I actually had my engineers turn in a weekly report where they talked about personally their struggles and, and what their goals are for next week. You can do a little bit of that in your video presentation after, each week. But I also had a second thing, which we're not going to make you all do, which is to really reflect on their ideas and their actions and figure out how they as a person could get better at doing their virtual team, doing their software, doing their, uh, their technology process that we were involved in at the time. So those are my 15 tips for effective virtual teams. Now I'm going to uh, break out of PowerPoint here, and I'm going to show you a couple of tools. So one of the tools, very common, Skype, um, which you can you know, get for free. Oops, if I go over here, you can get Skype for free uh, at Skype.com. Microsoft uh, has some nice processes to go with it now. It's, it's run by them. Uh, you can download it for free. It supports group chats, I think, up to six or eight now. It was four at one time. Um, and once you, once you have it, it's a pretty easy process. I can go into Skype. 
I can choose somebody. I have a long list of people I interact with. Um, I can search for them, so you can build a little group of all the people. You'll actually notice there's a little green dot on Steve. So Steve is currently online. He's a student, one of my graduate students. So I can have a textual chat with him down here. Um, I can also click on the video button on the top uh, or the phone call and have a quick virtual conversation. You, you can sort of see here's uh, for Monday we had a chat, yesterday we had two, right? Um, and this is somebody who's just down the hall from me, but it's still often more convenient to have a quick chat than to walk, you know, uh, 100 yards down the, to my lab and, and interact with people. So virtual teams can have lots of interactions. Um, another tool that I use, you'll sort of hear, here's all my, my apps that are open right now. Um, I'm pretty much always on Skype, so if you want to ask me a quick question, I'm Terry Bolt, T-E-R-R-Y-B-O-U-L-T at Skype. Um, here's another tool we use a lot, which is uh, Slack. Um, Slack allows me to have interactions with direct, direct interactions with various members of my team in my lab. And again, these are people that I you know, could walk down the hall and see sometimes, although this conversation was late at night, so I was chatting with Dan. It was after 8 o'clock, um, so we were still making things happen. Um, I actually have multiple channels here, so you can have channels for different formalized groups. So I have a, actually I don't want to show you that one, it's a company I'm working with, so I'm going to skip over that. But um, Skype also allows, or sorry, Slack also allows you to make phone calls and video calls, so you can use that tool as well. Um, Hangouts, so if I go back into Google and I go to hangouts.google.com, I can start a Google Hangout, which is a video call or a phone call. Um, and once I have that thing, I can set up groups. So here's some people I've recently communicated with. Um, so Mina and I talked last week. Um, I don't use Hangouts quite as much from this account. Uh, I actually have multiple accounts, so if you live different accounts, they, they show up as different uh, Google Hangouts. Um, and if I go to start a video call, I just click on the video call. It's going to start one up. Um, I can enter a Hangout name, uh, and then I can actually get a link to send to people. The other thing I can do is if I actually use Google Calendar, I can actually send a calendar invite. So if I go into my calendar and I look at a meeting, open up a meeting, um, there's notice there's a little camera here. I can join a meeting, which is a built up, built up Hangouts for this. So one way you can have your schedule thing is if you all use Google Calendar, which will also sync with Outlook and iPhone's calendar and a bunch of others. You can send a meeting invitation that has links on it. Um, for Google Hangouts War, I can actually replace it with other ones. So that's another pretty easy tool to use. The last one I'm going to show you is easytalks.com. Easytalks.com you know, is, is the URL. You can sign up for free. Uh, for free, you get a, a conferencing where you can have up to 100 people, but the limit here is it's only 40 minutes. I actually find this useful for lots of things because uh, in my field, there's lots of people that are long-winded, a little bit like I am. Um, so having very short meetings actually helps. And so having the meeting reminds you that you're coming up at the end of a 40-minute meeting, which is really only supposed to be half an hour, is a good thing. Um, if you want really long meetings, don't use this tool. But for most of what you're going to use in this class, uh, 40 minutes will be fine. So you'll just be able to go ahead and use that. So you, after you have it started up, we use Easy Talks, uh, which, as I said, they people want to use for our midterm presentation. So I want to make sure you at least saw a little bit of how to use that. So after you've installed it, go ahead and start it up. So now I have schedule a meeting, join a meeting, add contact, start a meeting. So um, if I want to schedule a meeting, I click on this. It gives me a date and time description, uh, and then I can have a schedule. That will give me a link I can email to people, or it will actually allow me to email them. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start a meeting for a second, just so I can also show you how to record. Um, so the nice thing about this is on different systems, it will be OK to record. So basically, once I start this, I'm going to turn on my video camera. Can't really see me very well, but uh, hopefully this will not be the quality of your video. You'll find a place where you can get enough light and be seen. Um, but after I have all the different people in the call, I can just click on this record button and it'll start to record. Uh, when it gets done, it'll save it in a file if you want. If I look under meeting info, it'll show me where both a meeting link. When I look under the info, and if I go back under the uh, settings, it'll show me where it's saving my recorded files. So in my case, it's going to easy talk records, whatever. So that gives me a, a good way of knowing where files are going, and then you can use those to upload them for our class assignments. So, um, so those are three tools uh, that I use very regularly. All of them are on my desktop because I use them that often. Um, you can use other tools as long as you have the ability to communicate in your team and to uh, upload the videos from it. Um, 
things like communication via text messaging and phone calls are also good. Uh, the one thing that we won't be able to do with that is we won't see the communication. So that's why we're asking for the video uh, assignment. So your, one of your assignments this week, which will be posted uh, this afternoon, and this link will actually be a video inside of this, but there'll also be an external link to this, uh, is this idea of your team venture discussion and communication charter. In this assignment, uh, it's a place for you to have some asynchronous discussions about which venture you're going to be performing and approach to teaming. Every, each week there will be a discussion for your team, a discussion board that will be a group only discussion, so not everyone else gets to see what you're, you're talking about. This is just for us. Um, so in this, there's two video links. This one that you're watching now. There's also a link uh, from HBR, a Business Review, on teamwork on the fly. It gets like five of the items I have on my, top, my list, but it's got some others. You're going to be building your uh, interaction. You're, you're going to have a discussion, part of which is about building your communications charter. There's a link here about a process for building it. Um, I actually recommend you can do some of this while you're having an audio video chat, while working on a shared document. Shared documents are easy with Office 365. It's a shared Word document um, or to use Google Documents. I don't really care what shared document you use, but it's a lot easier to do teamwork when you have shared things. Um, as mentioned in the syllabus, starting next week, uh, week four, um, at the beginning of each week uh, on Tuesday, your team, so there'll be an assignment for you to upload by next Tuesday, um, so it'll actually be due Monday, or by Tuesday morning, we'll make it Tuesday morning, your team will provide about a 15-minute uh, Scrum-like, if you Google Scrum-like, project progress report, right? If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it, we'll talk a little bit more, but basically what we're asking is that 15-minute video chat, which you're going to record and upload, uh, is uh, each of your team is going to basically explain his or her contributions to the project in the past week, and what he or she is expected to accomplish in the following week. So each team member will go around and say, here's what I've accomplished, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, and then there'll be some group discussion of what are our overall objectives for the next week. You can do, generally do that before you do the individual report outs, but you can do it either way. Um, and as you talk about that, think of, again, not just about your goals and roles, but also about the tasks and the processes you're going to use to get them done. Um, you're also supposed to have uh, the potential for the team instructors to give your team a video chat with you. It could be uh, at the same time or around the same time you're doing the video chat, it could be some others. So when you build your charter, we're looking for that to be 300 to 400 words, plus team con contact information, plus a schedule for both your team weekly video scrum meeting and the slots where one of your instructors might schedule a video call with your team. Okay. Uh, I don't care if you develop it, whatever tools you use to do it, but we want this to be then uploaded to this discussion board, and each member of your team should individually say, I agree to follow this charter, um, because you're agreeing to this communication process. So, uh, that's it for this video. Um, we'll have some other videos on other assignments for this week.